Right. If you've got a Jew or a block printer, a spare dry ice. So. <laughs> right. Okay, so everybody's got a good look at the dry ice. The reason I do that is just so that you don't get distracted by the bubbles. That's happening because the dry ice is at minus 77. Turn that into gas so you get bubbles. The bubbles are cold, so it makes the water condense. The water in the atmosphere condense, so you get clouds. So, oh, um, yeah. Use nearly all of it. Whoops. Number M, that's one number one, number two. There's another uh, three to go. That was the. Uh, right, so we'll now do it a little bit more methodically, right? So we've got some more water in here. Um, but I've put some universal indicator in, and so that tells me, yeah, any year 11 this year should probably be able to tell me what that is. If it's purple and it's universal indicator, that's strong alkali, that's about, about pH 14. So that's because I put some potassium hydro... Whoops. Yep, that was number three. Number two to go. That was the little tubes full of carbon dioxide solid. So, um, universal indicator is alkaline showing purple. If I put a bit in, we'll get the bubbles and the clouds just we've seen, but the other thing to do is have a look at, oops, that's number four, I think. Uh, have a look at the colors, still purple, but it's slowly reacting with the hydroxide and becoming carbonate. And so it's now green, it's now virtually neutral. Yellow. And eventually we might be able to persuade it to Go slight orange, just very slightly acidic. Right, so that's now about pH 4 or something, probably, orange. So, um, what happened there, we put dry ice, carbon dioxide into the water, and we changed it from being alkaline to acidic. That's proof. Thank you. That's proof that carbon dioxide is an acid. And that's a bit of a problem if you're trying to survive and you're a bit of coral in the sea. If there's too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, too much dissolves in the sea, it turns the seas acid, it kills the coral, it's a bad idea. So there's all sorts of reasons why we want to be trying to limit the amount of carbon dioxide that's being produced. The solutions to those problems are going to be provided by scientists and engineers. That's why we need lots of new scientists and engineers with good ideas to solve these problems. <coughs> Okay, so I think we've now had our first little explosions. They're just little physics explosions. All that happened was the carbon dioxide molecules being solid turned into gas. No actual chemical change, just the expansion from going from a solid to a gas. And that caused pressure and that caused the tubes to break and that you saw a pressure wave. So it's now we've got to the point where we'll put some chemistry behind the explosion. So again, an explosion is when you've got a pressure wave caused by something often that something can be the heat produced from a chemical reaction. Because in general, if you give the chemicals what they want, if you let them do what they want to do, they become more stable and they produce heat as a byproduct. And the more heat they produce, the more downhill the reaction is. So, um, here I'm going to show you something. Um, it's got several purposes, this demonstration. First of all is to show that there are solvents other than water. Oh, we've finally got that doing something at least. That's interesting. Never seen it do that before. <laughs> um, uh, right, so here I've got a different solvent. So water is the best solvent to use. It's the cheapest. It's the most environmentally friendly. Sometimes we need to use other solvents. So here I've got some ethoxy ethane, which is a solvent which has got carbon in it, and therefore it's better at dissolving things with carbon in. Like if I want to make a new medicine or something, I might often need to make those out of carbon atoms, so I need to use carbonaceous solvents. If you do that, then you need to be very careful that there's no Bunsen burners around. I don't have Bunsen burners today because I'm, in, you know, I'm not in a lab, I've got candles instead, but the point is the same. Naked flames and organic solvents do not mix, right? Because what I've got in here is hydrogen gas, so there's a lot of energy stored in here. That hydrogen wants to react with oxygen in the air. And when you give things what they want, they tend to give out extra heat. Uh, so you may want to protect your ears here. Mm. 
Nee. Don't be alarmed, I am highly trained professional. There we go. Well done. Now, something funny about the flames. If I just... Just so that everyone can see something funny about those flames. They're green. They're green. Now, we normally expect flames to be yellow. Have you ever wondered why are flames yellow? Flames are yellow because we're usually burning something with carbon in. And so we get excited carbon atoms in the flame and those glow yellow. I've got some carbon in there, but I've also got some boron. And I know that excited boron flames give you green color. So, and we know that how to extinguish a flame, for any combustion you need a fuel, you need heat, and you need oxygen. So you restrict the oxygen supply, it will go out. Um, so, how can we use the things we've seen here? We saw plenty of energy from the hydrogen explosion, we saw flame colours. So let's do the flame colours first, and I'll come back to the hydrogen explosion in a second. We'll do the flame colours. Any chance we could get the lights a bit further down than this? A few more lights down? Okay, the fl this fireworks generally look better than that, but we'll, we'll persevere. So... <laughs> what we've got here, because I'm a chemist, I know what to use to uh, make something violently burn in a way that I might wish if I was to make a firework. So here, 